Hi, this is an update on my six foot marine tank that I was building a while ago. Taking a bit of a change of stance and I'm changing from salt water to fresh water. Salt water was good but it was really high maintenance. Having to do the water changes, either make up the salt or go down to the sea and get some. Put it into storage tanks, do the water changes, do it all again. So um, I'm hoping that fresh water will be a bit easier. Uh, so I've decided to try setting it up as a freshwater planted tank um, predominantly and see how we go with that. I'm just, I've changed everything over to uh, saltwater material so I've got river sand, timber and put all of the coral and everything in storage for a while, see how it goes. I've just done the base, base layer. Uh, so I've got 50 kilos of river sand mixed in with 20 kilos of laterite and some ground eggshell and some blood and bone. Put that down as a base layer, which you can see down here. And then I've covered that with some shade cloth and put another 60 kilos of just plain river sand on top. I didn't clean the base layer very much because that would probably get rid of a lot of the nutrients. So the top layer has been cleaned pretty well. Um, and the, yeah, the base layer will provide nutrients to the plants that are planted into the top layer. The tank's pretty much the same. I've still got 50 mil drains at either end, which work excellently. And the inlets are still the same, but I'll be changing, I'll be changing the um, outlets on them. I've got the setup a bit different because we're still running the two sumps underneath, two separate sumps to make the most use of the underneath. But I've got the pump set for timers so that most of the time there's only one pump running. And they'll overlap for a few hours during the day. But uh, the issue that I was thinking with that was with some of the smaller fish with this setup, uh, if the pump's turned off, they might find a nice home in there until the pump turns back on. So these are quite big as well. With the saltwater tank, they were set up inside columns of coral and they're quite well hidden. But this time, I've got some stainless steel cages which will screw in. So it'll, it'll sit lower. It'll stop anything getting in there when the pump's not running. And just blend in a bit better. I just need to change these. These are 32 mil. I need to get 25s. I've got the timber in there just soaking as well. See if any of the tannin comes out. I've made some more changes since last time as well. Um, with the breathers, which work really well with quietening it down. With this one, you can see the cap off. It's fairly loud. This is only running with one pump, so it's quieter than normal. The cover makes quite a bit of difference, but with these before, the anti-siphon line that I have now has an adjustment on there so that if this pump's running, there'll be a stream of water that goes through there and out here and down the breather. Um, it has a valve on it so that if I turn this drain off but keep the pump on so that all of the water runs down the other drain, that if I do any work on this side, if I change anything on this side, I don't have to switch everything off. I can just turn the valve, stop water flow through here. The main reason for that is I've made up some activated carbon filters as well, which slide inside out of 32 mil PVC. So this will be filled with activated carbon. It has holes drilled in it. So that the water from the overflow will also run through activated carbon as an additional filter. All it does is it sits in there 
the tube goes into that hole there and it just trickles through and that's on both sides. On the back, the sump setup's the same. Just uh, the drain comes down the breather through a ball valve and into the sump. And I'll probably put some gravel or something in here as well. Goes through the filtration, which is bio balls, uh, rolled up shade cloth, some sponge, a lot of surface area for it. Runs through there, then into here, which is where the pump is. Here you can see uh, I've blocked that off. That was for the uh, chiller return line before. And there's one on the other sump as well, which when there was an external skimmer, it would drain back in, but because we don't need either of them anymore, got rid of them. There's a balance pipe for the two sumps. So if one of the sumps is turned off, it draws from both sides. Um, works quite well. And then I've got a cap here for any additives or whatever that you want to put in there. The outlet for the sump through a quick release join here just still runs up above the water line so that when the pump turns up it doesn't just drain down into the sump to the anti-siphon behind the board with the wiring and then down this is the inlet to the tank and down to a ball valve and a hose fitting which comes in very handy for water changes hook up your hose to here uh, run it outside, turn this valve, and the water drains from the inlet out the hose and outside. And when you want to fill it up, you can either run it straight from the tap if your water's good enough, or what I have is two storage drums outside with some aged water with a 5,000 litre pump, which has got a garden hose as well. I hook that up, that pump up to this, turn the valve, and it just fills the tank back up much easier than salt water. And then this side here, the water that goes across, ball valve. And this was to feed the chiller previously. And there's one on the other side as well, same thing, to feed the skimmer. I've tidied up the wiring. It was pretty messy with the salt water setup just because of how many things it had to run. So. While there's not as much wiring with the fresh water, it's just a lot tidier. Um, this timer runs the left hand pump that runs the right hand. As I was saying before, both pumps are set to run for 12 hours with a two hour overlap for each. Two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. So for four hours of the day, both pumps run. And for the remainder of the day, there's only one. Over in this breather, this one's set up with the um, carbon filter, so it just slides in, and you can see here the line goes in underneath and into the cap just here. You pull it out when you want to change it. Uh, if you want to change it while the pump's running, just turn this valve which will stop the water flow to here. Take it out, change it, put it back, make sure you turn the valve back on again, otherwise it'll siphon back up if there's blackout or you turn the pumps off. The drains are pretty much the same. Still 50 mil drains. I've put a bit of a cage around it just to stop any small fish or anything getting washed down. Uh, these used to have a screw-in cage similar to the 32mm ones I showed you. And that was because when I fed the saltwater fish any shrimp or small fish just to stop them getting washed down, it was a bigger version of this one which screwed into there. So I've got rid of those. Um, just put some foam in there, still filled with bio balls. Quietens it down heaps. It's very noisy without anything in there. I'm considering getting some of this sponge and cutting it into a, cylinder, a tube and maybe just put it down inside the pipe 
not too sure yet. It might make it quieter and provide a good biological filter as well. That hole was cut because uh, the cage used to protrude through the top. The sump, 3,000 litre pump, two of them. There's your bio balls, um, sponge, fine mesh gauze, and there's rolled up shade cloth as well in the two chambers behind it. Plenty of space in there to fit a heater. So, I'll probably run this for a week or so, depending on what leaches into the tank from the wood. I might do a water change after about a week or so. See how that goes. There's a lot of stuff in the water too from the base layer. So I'll check it over, over the next three or four months and see how it goes and probably start looking at putting some basic fish in and some plants. I expect to put a fair few plants in there and maybe look at a CO2 system as well. Anyway, I'll update you later.